they are still trying to find an answer to that. But the Chinese also have the habit of they have always interesting mails, so even every day you have like very high, at least 10 of these mails. Hi, I'm Mary, I'm Mary, and how are you? And you know, so they have English names or something. And uh, the sun is shining very bright out of my office. She doesn't know you from Adams. How was it in India? You know, I would like to introduce my company to you and there are a big catalog of them. And if you reply to this mail, then there are chances that they will start. But these are not the kind of companies you want to do business with. The kind of companies you want to do business with are not writing these mails. So there is a big communication difference. It's not easy to get into China. Once you get it, you can be an affair, you find a, I mean, in business you will find many, many ways of making the first contact. But once you make the first contact, what is very interesting is, it's not important who you are. It's very, very important who the person who made that first contact is. So you, if you, so I have seen this practically in many cases, so you walk in uh, as whoever the, uh, the boss of a company like this, Depending on who introduced you, and now that up, uh, and I found this specifically because Manushri rightly said, when I was president of the Electronic Association, for example, so I had two cards. And emails were being going to different email IDs. And in some cases, they were, depending on where I was answering them from, so some people would, would see this president of the Electronic Association. And their complete uh, way of dealing with you in business would change. You were suddenly uh, taken to a higher level of lunch, if there is one, uh, given uh, better wine, you know. Uh, more expensive gifts. It's not funny, but that's how they work. And if the guy who's introducing you there happens to also be the president of their electronic association, my God, you cannot do any business that day. You can only get gifts and nice things, but no business at all. <laughs> so they do these. Uh, culturally, they're very different in the way they eat, for example, and I'm sure you know that. Uh, all Chinese restaurants, it is, you know, uh, you know if we were to take somebody here, we'd take him to a fancy restaurant, but you would sit on a table with other people sitting on the tables. Now that if you would do in China and do this, it's a complete no. If I take you, if I, if I take a Chinese guy, of course in India they know that you don't have a choice. But in China, if somebody takes you to a restaurant where other people are seated, please forget any business. There is no chance to do any business because that guy is not even taking you seriously. If they are serious about business, you will be taken to a private dining room where nobody else is present except you and him. So it will be in a small room, very comfortable room, very well done. But it will be the four of you or the six of you, no more. But what is interesting is when they do this and the way that they order food is 50% of what they order has to be left on the table. So the first few years I had the great difficulty wasting so much food. So you try to overeat a little bit, you know. But the moment you pick up something from a plate because it's all in the lazy lazy in the central, uh, you know, the merry-go-round, if you may call it that. So everything is lying on that and everybody picks up the same thing. Uh, and they all pick up with the chopstick and they all eat with the chopstick, but they eat it from the same place. Right? So initially, especially for the vegetarian Indian, the God save you because it can be quite difficult. Everybody's eating out of the same plate in a way. But you do that for some time. And then you say, okay, something is left and you don't want it to be wasted, you pick up. This guy will quietly call the waitress and order a lot of plate of that. Because he thinks you need more. You know, so there could be okay, minor issues like this. <laughs> so you have to get used to eating, literally, I'm not exaggerating, 50% of the food order must leave, be left at the table when you leave. <laughs> I, I've done this for 10 years, so, you know. What is very interesting, but okay, this is something you can understand. What I never understood, which I really appreciate, is the driver who's driving your car will be the seventh man on your table. So if there are three cars who are driving you, you are driving one, the owner of the factory is another one, there's a third guy just following you to make sure you have a car or whatever. Three drivers will join you. So there could be four of you in the business meeting and three other drivers are sitting at the table. And that's I think the communist uh, meeting or whatever. And they're very comfortable. Those three eat very differently of course because they come from a different background. Uh, they make a lot of noise when they're eating. Uh, you know, and they're really not interested in the business chatter because you're doing it in English. And there's a translator who's trying very hard to make some sense of what they're trying to say. But these three drivers are having a very good time by themselves. There's a separate party going on. And you have to learn to ignore that. So it's not easy in the beginning, you know, because uh, you think it's a serious business thing and I want to make your best impression. You've read the latest article in HBR, so you want to follow it to the T. None of that is going to happen. Because these guys have uh, an agenda completely of their own. But what helps to them, uh, you know, what I like about that thing and what is very easy to remember is that they do business only with friends. If you remember that, unless you get into their friend circle, there is almost no business happening. You can struggle however hard you can pray, present your... I remember one case where this guy came by shouting. Uh, we used to get wired from him for years. He sent it to us on an LC and it's painful to open an LC every time. 
wait for 90 days and sometimes you need it urgently, they would say, sorry, no LC, no material can be given to you. And then I was visiting them uh, two years ago. So my coaches guy came to me and said, can you do me a favor? Can you talk to this company because you are in that area and see if you can get rid of this LC? I said, why, why do you? I didn't know about this earlier, we had this discussion. He said, because I tried many times, they don't, they don't agree. So I said, okay. And then, whatever little understanding of the culture I had, I decided to use my warranty now, my network in China. Just called up one of my old friends there. I said, we know this company. He said, yeah, yeah. I'll drive you there. He's an old friend of mine. So perfect. And then on the way, I told him, I said, look, you know, I've never been to this company. I have no interest. So he said, why are you going to this company? So I said, I have one point agenda. We have this problem. He said, oh, don't worry. It will be fixed. So this guy gives the guy a call. They had a chat uh, in Mandarin for some time. By the time we arrived there, we did not, I did not utter the word LC or the payment terms because he told me it's done. Don't worry about it. All he did was when I was there, he presented our company in great light. He told them who we are, I invited him over to India. No business discussions. The next morning I had him at Blackberry, a thank you mail from my purchase manager, saying their purchase manager has contacted them and everything like that. Yeah. So it's a very indirect way of doing business. And especially if you've been exporting to Europe, you can imagine something goes wrong with your mind, uh, you know, because if you're trying to sell in Europe and buy out of China, you can go crazy. Because they're completely different cultures. In India, we are somewhat, I mean, I'm getting used to both, so you are really close to them. So what are some of the surprises? Like I said, okay, personal connections first, and you have to develop them, you have to invest in them. Uh, and sometimes they are difficult, especially if you work for, for somebody else. Very difficult to explain to your boss that I blew a thousand dollars, only on having lunch and dinner, and then nothing more going to the boat. And unless I go the next month again, nothing will happen. Yeah, so it becomes difficult, but it's true that that's the way they work. They love to avoid specifics. So we work, with, we, we were trained by a Japanese company, we do a lot of business in Germany, and these are cultures that are very, very specific. They, I mean, they would kill me if I say I want to buy wire. They throw you out the door. Just, what wire are you talking about? What specification? You know, what micro thickness? What tolerance? And there are factories that are dealing with the problems of plus minus one micron, and there are factories that are dealing with plus minus one five. Because the guy who has one does not do point. It's a different level of business for them. But in China, you cannot afford to go to them and start talking about spending. So it's a, it's a culture that, in my opinion, loves this whole abstract. My wife went with me on one of these trips, and she said, You talk about these lunches and dinners, but what should I even more? Is the tea ceremony today? And she said the CEO of those companies, whoever you go to, basically the owner, uh, manager, owner, CEO, they were all in a very fancy office that we did this business with that I do. Uh, at least size of one person's office is a little bigger than this room. That's the average. There are many more who are much more. And uh, they will have uh, a table which is not very important for them. Then they have this very nice, cute, ornate sofa on the set. So you sit down on the sofa and that's where business is going to happen. They have a, a tea table in the middle which is basically an electric kettle. And then there are very small cups, and you see the Chinese tea cups, the green tea cups. And then they are serving you green tea. It is criminal to say I don't drink green tea, because you're going to forget business again. <laughs> yeah. So there are some things that you can't do. You can be vegetarian, but you can't be saying go to green tea. Yeah. So these guys will then heat up the, uh, the kettle, and the hot water that's coming out of them, just to give you an example of how seriously they can make something. And then with that first, when the water is on, they will take the water into another kettle in which there is some tea leaves. And then you think now the tea is going to come to you because it's brewed. So you picks it up with some tongs and then he will pour it into all the cups. And if, you're, if it's your first time, you start thinking, okay, you say, no, 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 don't do that. You then you take another pair of tongs and empty out all these cups. So the cups are being heated with tea. They're not being, they're being warmed up, not with hot water, but with tea of an inferior quality. That's then thrown away. Now the cups are ready for use and now they bring in the real green. Then we start the whole experiment all over again, another 15 minutes ago. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so meanwhile, I don't like to hold my attention and say, look, I have another meeting to go to. You know? So please listen to me, but it's not going to happen. And God forbid, because you always have an interpreter, and the interpreter just gets start having a discussion about the key with that human. So that's far more important than, than the business. Slowly, after a few trips, they start sinking into you. But that's where I think uh, being a keen listener is very, very important. So I figured out somewhere they have a very simple answer. If you are in China, if you are drinking tea and you do this, you will be taken in with arms, with, uh, with welcoming arms. And what do you do? What do you do? Why do you do this? It's because they have a story that one of their emperors, I don't know who it was, I've heard it many times, but I keep forgetting the details. So 
this emperor decided to go incognito into the uh, into into society to find out how he was doing you know, as a leader. How were people talking about him? And one of the things they always did was they were selling Ali tea from them. You know, and selling tea shops all over the place. So he decided to go to one of the tea shops and he was waiting for his cup of tea while everybody was chatting and he was trying to listen in on them. He was dressed as a commoner. Then one of the guys, maybe from his or whatever his details were, he recognized that this was the king. So he sort of wanted to bow to him, but he said, if I bow to him, he understood that everybody will get to know that he's the king and whatever he's trying to do will be lost. So in an action, he made an action of of bowing down, of kneeling, because when they bow, they, they do it on their knees, not on their knees. So he, he made that action with his hands that I'm bowing down to you. And the king acknowledged that, and uh, we that's the tradition. So whenever somebody tells you tea, you, you are sort of buying down to them in respect. And the way to do that is just put your knuckles on the thing and you saying, I bow to you, or I beat you. And now the moment you do that, it's very funny because it's a nice simple story. But the moment you do that, they begin to realize that you are somebody who is very serious about China, who has taken the trouble of trying to understand them, and who probably has been in China for a hundred years. <laughs> so that initially gets you those points, those boundary points that you need to be able to get to their policy. So little thing, uh, respect for elders, which is quite common in India, but over there, if you don't do that, you're considered really rude. You know, sometimes in India we can get away with the, uh, a lot of people don't know how to behave very well in a restaurant, so they do chew or, uh, you know, crack their fingers while calling a waiter. And to do that in China, I mean, it's, it's very, very disrespectful. But that's because, that's the way they treat everybody else around them, with some amount of respect. Yeah. Or they can do it with their staff, but you're not allowed to do that. So there are some things which are completely unknown. And those are the ones that uh, that could help, you know, 